Breaking tonight, President Obama says we are safer under his watch. Despite the rise of radical Islam and the return to terror just last week of a Taliban general released by his administration. Welcome to The Kelly File, everyone. I'm Megan Kelly. Last summer, President Obama freed five top Taliban generals from the Guantanamo Bay prison camp, with the White House insisting that freedom came with conditions and we need not worry. The five men had to stay under house arrest in the Gulf nation of Qatar. They could not return to Afghanistan for one year, and they could not communicate with other terrorists. But then last week, just months after their release, shockingly, we learned that at least one of the five had, in fact, attempted to return to terrorizing people. On Friday night, I asked, I asked the Pentagon's spokesman how these killers had the ability to reach out to fellow terrorists when they were supposed to be under such close watch. And more importantly, what's going to happen when they are scot-free in three months? What we're being told is they made contact with the Haqqani network, but if, if, yeah. our, if our protocols are so great, how did they, how did they make contact? I'm not at liberty to describe exactly what the reengagement activity was. Obviously, which, there's a flaw in the system. Actually, no, Megan. Uh, it was the system in place. It was the assurances and the security measures that we put in place that allowed us to to discover the reengagement activity. So we don't shut down the opportunity for these five guys to make contact with with other terrorists. That's a little disconcerting. I mean, should well, they be allowed to have this communication in the first place? Well, obviously, we don't want them to have communication with former Taliban. Qatar is only going to watch them for a year, and that year is up in May. And clearly, they're interested in returning to terror. So what are we going to do after May? Well, I can't talk again about the specifics of the security arrangements uh, with uh, Qatar. Can they go back to Afghanistan? Well, again, I'm, I'm not. Uh, they are. They are. They are not free to travel. Uh, Even after uh, right the year. Now. But after well, the year again, in Qatar, are they free to travel out of, out of Qatar after I, the year? I, I just can't go into the details of what the Why don't security assurances know? are. Joining me now, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham, who's a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee. He has introduced legislation that would ban the transfer of medium and high-risk prisoners out of Guantanamo Bay. Senator, good to see you tonight. And so he wouldn't get specific about wh what happened, but he said the system worked. Do you agree? Uh, no, the admiral is a fine man, and he's trying to tell the American people something that doesn't make sense. At the end of May, they're going back to the fight. They have not been reformed. Ask them tomorrow, do you renounce the Taliban? They're in military prison in Guantanamo Bay because they collaborated with al-Qaeda to attack the homeland. They were in charge of the Taliban government. They were senior Taliban officials before 9-11. That's the reason they're in jail. And they're going back to the fight just as sure as night follows day. This makes absolutely no sense. He seemed to think that the system worked because clearly, <laughs> without getting specific about how we found out, we were monitoring <clears throat> them. We caught one guy, I guess, trying to make contact with terrorists, presumably Taliban, right. and now we're on it and we'll stay on it. Well, these are the same people, the administration at Toji al-Qaeda has been decimated and that uh, ISIL is basically the JV team. The president of the United States is who I have a beef with, not Admiral Kirby. He is just, they put him in a box and he, he can't he do any better. He has to defend the Pentagon, correct? Yes, That's he does. He's a, he's a good man. But here's what I really do have a problem with. Our president will not call this radical Islam. You know, before World War II, people believed that they just gave Hitler one more country or a German-speaking <laughs> uh, portion of a country, he would be fine. They never really understood that Hitler wanted a master race. His goal was not to take parts of the Sudetenland or the Rhineland, but dominate the world with an mm -hmm. Aryan race and, and others would just suffer and the Jews would be destroyed. The radical Islamists are motivated by a religious doctrine that has no place for your I, moderate Muslims, or anybody else they disagree with. But, but the they want a master religion. But they the don't president want a master doesn't, race. He doesn't seem to dispute that, but he, he doesn't like describing it as radical Islam. And he spoke to why uh, just this past week in an interview with CNN. Listen. <clears throat> there is an element growing out of Muslim communities in certain parts of the world that have perverted the religion I reject a notion that somehow that creates a religious war because the overwhelming majority of Muslims reject that interpretation of Islam. They don't even recognize it as being uh, Islam. Your thoughts on that? 
Well, number one, Mr. President, when you talk about closing Gitmo and you talk about, you know, uh, the, if you if you close Gitmo tomorrow and you gave the Palestinians everything they wanted, it would not stop radical Islamists. Radical Islam is motivated by a religious doctrine that requires them to purify their religion. They can't be accommodated or appeased. But his Your point strategy... is it's not all of Islam. <laughs> so why even just bring Islam into it? The biggest victims of radical Islam are other people within the faith. If you don't understand what these people are trying to do, you can't defeat them. Clearly, he doesn't understand that ISIL is no longer the JV team. He clearly doesn't understand that part of their charter is to destroy Israel and to come after us. If you really believed ISIL represented a threat to our homeland, would you be engaged in the strategy we are today? Wouldn't you have some American ground forces working with the region to defeat mm -hmm. these guys? When President Obama accuses John McCain and Lindsey Graham of wanting 250,000 troops to fight ISIL, he is basically mischaracterizing what we're saying to hide his weakness and his incompetence. The President of the United States is disconnected from what's going on in the Mideast. His strategy is failing. And if you don't admit that we're at war with radical Islam, they're certainly at war with us, you can't defeat these people. You have to understand what they want and Understood. what motivates them to defeat them. That's what the general testified to last week, which is why I was pressing the Rear Admiral uh, Kirby about it. Uh, John, uh, Lindsey Graham, thank you very much for being here. We appreciated it. Thank you.